So this is a really common and a really great question that I keep getting on some of my videos, and that is basically which degrees will lead to you becoming a millionaire or which degrees will give you the best chance of making a million dollars. So that's what I'm gonna go over in this video, and I think the answers are really gonna surprise you, and hopefully this video helps you decide which direction you will go with your career. And I do just wanna quickly mention that some of these degrees will lead you to getting a job or a career that will make you a millionaire, whereas some of them will teach you the skills that you need to go off on your own, become an entrepreneur, and then in turn become a millionaire. And as a bonus at the end, I'm gonna tell you which ones I think lead to pathway number one, where you become a millionaire over the long run by just investing and you know working in your career, and which ones have the best opportunity to lead you to pathway number two, where you can become a millionaire by creating a product or a service and becoming an entrepreneur and selling it. So I'm basing this list off of a study that was done by Wealth Insight, where they basically looked at all of the millionaires and billionaires in the world, traced their origins back to which degrees they got when they went to college, and then they figured out which degrees will give you the best chance of becoming a millionaire. So number 10 on the list is gonna be politics, and the major would be political science, and basically these are the people who become the mayors of your city, or maybe they become a senator or a congressman or a congresswoman. Some of the most successful ones might even make it up to being the governor of a state or the president of the United States. And the study also mentioned that a lot of the politicians didn't really necessarily make their millions from the job that they were doing, but they made their money by investing in the financial sector. And this makes sense because if the government changes the laws surrounding a certain industry and you understand and know how to read the laws and predict what changes are gonna happen in the economy, then you can either invest in a business or not invest in a business, maybe you short it even, based on the changes in these laws. So number nine on the list was finance, and this one makes a lot of sense as well. And a lot of people in this industry will make a lot of money from the jobs themselves because the jobs are quite high paying, but I think the real benefit comes from being able to understand investments and understand what the best places that you can put your money in. And so not only do they they make quite a bit of money, but they can put their money in a place where it's gonna make money for them, and eventually it'll get to the point where they're making so much passive income that they can just quit their job. Now, number eight on their list was computer science. I believe that in the next 10 to 20 years, this one is gonna be more like in the top three, if not number one on the list. And this one kind of goes without saying, but all of the biggest companies, the companies that have grown like crazy over the last 10 to 20 years, you think about Amazon, Facebook, Google, all of them have one thing in common, and that is technology. They've not only embraced technology, but they've actually revolutionized it, and it's gonna get even more so like that in the next 20 years, in my opinion. AI, cloud computing, machine learning, all of these things that require the skill set of somebody who has a computer science degree are going to be huge. And so there is going to be so much demand for your knowledge and your skills if you uh, get a degree in computer science in the next 20 years. And it's just crazy what they're paying. Even entry level software engineers are going in right after high school, college sometimes, six figure job, and it only goes up from there. And not only that, you can get rich just from having a job alone and then being smart with your money and investing it, but you can also branch off, become an entrepreneur, make a ton of money that way, and then either get bought out by a bigger company for you know 10 million, 20 million, 100 million dollars, or more, or just continue running your business and make a ton of money from that. Number seven on their list is an oldie but a goodie, and that is accounting. Accountants are the ones that crunch the numbers in businesses, they might help with taxes, and these are all services that you've needed in the past and you're gonna need well into the future, so this one isn't gonna go away. And additionally, because they're so important in a business, they probably understand the financial part of investing, and so they make good decisions when it comes to where they put the money that they make. The next one on the list is one you might have not even heard of, but it's actually commerce. And this one is more about understanding the underlying systemic processes within entrepreneurship and business. And whereas economics is more about understanding the big picture of where money goes and how money flows throughout the country, commerce is more focused on the consumer and the producer and the relationship between those two. So you can sort of think of 
economics as macro, like the big picture, and commerce as micro, kind of like zoomed in the small picture, but they're both kind of going over similar subjects. And commerce is one where they're very likely to go into entrepreneurship because it helps you make good business decisions on a small level. So if you're starting a small business, it'll help you design one that is very likely to succeed. The next one on the list is gonna be business administration, and this kind of just goes over the whole process of running a business from management to leadership to outsourcing things, all of that whole process of running a business. This is the one that sort of ties everything together. And so obviously, if you understand the underlying processes of running a business, you're gonna make good investments. You're also going to be very valuable to people who want you to come in and take some of their workload off of them. So if you can become a very good manager or something like that, you can get paid top dollar. Another one on this list is gonna be lawyers or pre-law. And I think this one is one that has been traditionally very good, but it's been slipping in the last decade or so. I think it's very difficult to get a good job as a lawyer unless you go to a top 10 school and you're one of the top students, and then you have to go into one of the best law firms and become a partner. And that can take years and years of 80 hour work weeks in order to get to that partner level. And then you're finally set and you're making really good money. But law is a little bit overrated in my opinion. Used to be a fantastic one to go into to, but you do need to be a little bit careful going into this one. But with that being said, if you are a lawyer, you're gonna have a much better understanding when laws get passed in the business realm. And so it's gonna help you a lot when it comes to your investments. You're gonna notice patterns and you're gonna be able to predict the outcome of some law that just got passed and what that's gonna cause you know, the stock prices of this company to do. Number three on the list is going to be economics. And this one is like I was talking about before, it's kind of like commerce, but it's more on a larger scale. And this one helps you in all three realms because you can get a pretty good job with economics, but at the same time, it's gonna help you with investments because you understand business, and it's gonna help you go into an industry where you're very likely to succeed as an entrepreneur. So this is a really good one to get into, and I'm not surprised that it's number three on the list. The next one on the list is a graduate degree or MBA, which is a Master's of Business Administration. And this one was kind of like the BA that we talked about before, but it's a master's, so it's a higher level. You're gonna be learning much more complicated concepts. And overall, I think this one is a little overrated. It's slipped, it's not quite what it used to be just because of the fact that I think that there's a lot of programs that kind of offer this one on the side. You can sort of tack on an MBA just by going to night classes. But if you go to a good school and you get an MBA, it can open a lot of doors for you. So it's definitely one you should still consider. But this one is going to be really good for all of the reasons that I mentioned before before, you're gonna understand business, you're gonna be able to start your own business, you can go in and become a manager for an existing business, take off a lot of the workload from the owner or some of the other presidents, vice presidents, CEOs of the business. And so for that reason, you become extremely valuable to them. And then with the money you make, you can go ahead, go into the financial sector, invest, and then make even more money. Now you've probably noticed that a lot of the ones on this list are related to business. And then there was the one that was related to law, and then there was one with computer science. But overwhelmingly, it seems like business degrees are the ones that create the most millionaires. And in my opinion, this is because a lot of them end up becoming entrepreneurs. Now, number one on the list, this one actually really surprised me when I saw it, but it's engineering. And I really had to think about this one because obviously, you know, engineering jobs pay pretty well, but I don't think that's the reason that engineers make up the most millionaires on this list. I I think the real reason that engineers make the most millionaires is several reasons. First of all, when you go to college and you get an engineering degree, it is extremely difficult. So you cannot get an engineering degree unless you're a very, very hard worker. Kevin O'Leary, also known as Mr. Wonderful on Shark Tank, absolutely loves hiring engineers. He does all kinds of talks at different engineering schools. And I think that the reason for that is because for one, they're very hard workers. And for two, they learn practical problem solving. So we're not just talking about solving a problem, you know, on a piece of paper, on a math sheet. We're talking about solving problems that are causing a lot of people pain in the real world. Being able to design the solution to that problem and then being the middleman, the fountainhead that creates the solution or the product or the software or whatever it is. This is an invaluable skill
skill because what entrepreneurship is, when you really boil it down, is practical problem solving. You go out in the world, you find a problem, and you solve it. Now, additionally, not only do engineers have to be very hardworking and they have to be good at practical problem solving, but most engineers are very, very smart. This is not one of those majors that you can go into not being intelligent and just work really hard. Some of the concepts that they go over in engineering are extremely advanced, and if you're not pretty smart, chances are you're just not gonna cut it. So that's the reason that I think engineers are so successful. But as promised, as a bonus, I'm gonna go over which ones I believe create the most entrepreneurs, which ones get rich from investing, and which ones uh, can get rich from just having a job. So in my opinion, I think the best one on the whole list is gonna be computer science, because you can definitely get rich just from having a job. They pay computer scientists ridiculous amount of money, like the mid-level engineer years at Google are making like $300,000 a year. It's insane. I think all of the business ones are really good when it comes to creating your own business, but the ones that's probably the best when it comes to you know managing people, creating a business that's going to be successful is gonna be the MBA and then the business administration undergrad. These are the ones that are probably gonna help you the most when it comes to starting a business out of all the business related majors that I mentioned. And then I think the one that's really good at making you rich just from having a job alone is gonna be accounting. And then all of the other business majors really help when it comes to making smart financial decisions when it comes to investing your money. Getting into politics or a law degree is also going to help you make really good investing decisions. And then engineering is probably the one that's going to be the best for you when it comes to starting your own business. And engineering is one of the best overall because if you decide not to start your own business, you can still become an engineer and make a really good living. Go ahead and check out my videos right here. I made them just for you. Uh, smash the like button, uh, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any questions you have, any uh, video ideas, comments, criticisms, concerns, etc. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much.